Okay, I spoke to both of your fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning you now, obey my commands at all times, shake hands, and good luck. Jim, I see this fight as an athlete, Tony, who was a high school quarterback against a warrior, Barkley, in what may just turn out to be a Warriors game. We'll see whether Tony can maintain his poise in the face of what is expected to be a fierce pass rush. <laughs> I think the most important man tonight is Richard Steele. They couldn't have picked a stronger referee. You like Richard Steele? For this fight, take somebody strong and willing. Barkley comes out with an apparent urge to overwhelm Tony from the beginning, and Tony catches him inside with counter lefts and rights. Barkley trying to go to the body, Tony coming right up the middle, and James Tony is giving better than he's getting. Tony is getting in good uppercuts right now, left uppercuts, but he shouldn't throw too many of them the first round. Well, already you've seen Tony's superior technicianship. Iran came in winging wide, as he loves to do, and Tony stepped right up the middle to take advantage. Tony should keep this as skillful as he can. Barkley is not a skillful fighter, he's a puncher. Why wait in and play that game? Yeah, but now we're into stage two. Tony, who's often accused of not fighting the full minutes, or the full three minutes of every round, begins to stand against the ropes and relax and allow Barkley to wail away at it. And Barkley has been caught with some effective shots that, in the body that could have some telling points as the fight goes along. Barkley will keep going to the body. He's not the kind of guy who forgets to do it. Tony scores with an uppercut inside. But the longer James stands still on the ropes, the more he plays Barkley's game. I think if he stands on the rope and not try to push this guy, he can be a lot more effective than trying to push him out. No holding, no holding. Just hit him because he's not quick. He's only powerful. Good body punch, a good left hook to the side, and Barkley is starting to show a little blood. That's right, there's blood under Iran's left eye. Barkley has a history as a bleeder, and right now, Tony is whacking away with tremendous effect in the middle of the ring. And Tony just walks away and rests for a second, and Iran Barkley comes storming back at it. He walked away because he said earlier, you're gonna see some blood quick. He has seen blood, now he's happy. Couldn't ask for a more entertaining first two minutes of the fight. It was everything the experts expected it to be. For the first time in Tony's career, about fighting only a few minutes every round should be right to which time he shouldn't exalt himself. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Tony looks very relaxed and very confident early on in his first bout against a really high-skilled, accomplished 168-pound fighter. There's a good right uppercut inside that brings the crowd alive. Barkley has been hit before by some of the best punchers in the world. He's gotten up, so you don't get carried away. Once you hit him, you just keep it set up in that fashion. Iran Barkley's the only man on the planet who has beaten Tommy Hearns twice. Nobody else can claim that. On Barkley, because if Barkley is still there in the second half of the fight, he's gonna come on with his strength. He said earlier he was going to hit this guy in the side, and Barkley is starting to land punches around the side. But it seems that Tony's left jab is the best thing he's got tonight. Well, you already saw the punch stat numbers that indicated a great first round for James Tony. And beyond those numbers, he doubled Barkley in power shots, 33 to 17. I think Tony is going to have to settle in and realize, I can outbox this guy. It's real easy. Jab him and stop worrying about Punch taking him out. If he makes that decision, it can be an easy fight for him. But if he doesn't, he's going to get rocked and rolled tonight. And incidentally, the blood was from Barkley's nose, not from above his eye. And I don't think Tony liked that. <laughs> Got a little overconfident because he thought the blood was coming up. Good but chopping left hand and inside by Tony. He has great counterpunching ability, and against a guy like Barkley, that will afford him a lot of opportunities. Oh, right hand on the shoulder of Tony seemed to stun him for a second. Both fighters landing to the body. 
Come on, work it, get out, work it. It's going to take two or three rounds before Break Tony realized I'd better respect this big man's power. Barkley just missing with the right cross. It skimmed across the side of Tony's head. When you're 160 pounds, those right hands that you turn don't hurt that much. When you're up at 68, those right hands norm your legs. Good uppercut inside by Tony. You heard Bill Miller, Tony's trainer, telling him that Barkley was a sucker for an uppercut. And Tony lands another one in there. Why don't you get out? But those uppercuts got to be followed by something around the side, some body punches, chest and to the side, him, because this guy is regularly about 200 pounds. He's accustomed to taking big shots like that. How to get out of Some bigger guy. Tony landing with the jab. Barkley just steps past it to come inside. Tony's quicker hands still a factor, particularly every time they step away from the ropes and into the middle of the ring. Barkley landing a left hook to the top of Tony's head. Tony is really getting good with his left jab at this point. He's standing right on the ball Punch of his feet, out. Out. jabbing and not jumping backwards. When you see a fighter do that, that means he's confident. Great. Tony, do the same thing, Chad. That's all. Okay. That's all, but I need more of that jab. There's a Barkley punch, but it did not land flush. James Tony is very, very difficult to hit on the head. People have said he has a small head and he rolls his shoulders away from punches very cleverly, George. Move your head. Move your head, man. All right, move your head. That was an odd punch we saw in the replay. At best, it appeared to hit Tony on the shoulder, but it also appeared to stun him for a second. And Barkley, George, is a guy who wants to hit you anywhere he can make contact. Right. Now, Tony has sold all the whoop tickets about how he's going to knock him out. Now he should be contented with just winning every round. Let the knockout come no. by itself. Don't try to create it. Barkley should try and make this fight as wild as he can and stop standing back with his left jab. Just get in and wait in there. It was the left shoulder where Tony was hit, but he's using the left hand liberally. So it does not appear that there was any injury which should affect him in the bout. Tony again scoring a right uppercut inside. Barkley continues to bang away to deliver in kidneys, trying to slow Tony down to create some opportunities later on in the fight. I think Barkley coming in with his mean demeanor and how tough he is. Now he should settle down, but he's, he's going to think the crowd is going to say, you can't do it, you're scared. So he puts himself in a corner that he shouldn't be in at this point. With his longer reach, he should have been ahead on point. Another uppercut lands inside. Most Great. effective punch of the bout for Tony by a wide margin. Tony walking away. Barkley steps in and whacks with the left hook. No holding. And we've got a fairly steady flow of blood now coming out of both of Iran Barkley's nostrils. Come on, let's work. Tony is not content because he wanted him to be busted in the eyes at this point. Good right hand by Barkley. Good left hook inside by Tony. Right hand by Tony. Right hand by Barkley. They are trading shots. Those exchanges do not help Tony. There's a solid right cross by Tony, but it didn't seem to stun Iran Barkley. And one thing we know about Barkley, he can take a punch. Very smart. Tony landed his shots and moved out of the way. And the mouthpiece is knocked completely out of Barkley's mouth by the fabulous right cross from Tony. And here comes Iran stepping in without his mouthpiece, showing his courage and his resiliency. Tony is starting to get real accurate. He's Throwing that right hand right down Time. like threading the needle. Go to the corner. Go. Stay. And now Richard Steele will give Barkley a chance to replace the mouthpiece. Let's go. Let's go. Iran right, Barkley does take a Let's punch, go. as you say, Jim, but it's not a virtue to take this many hard, clean punches. And you know something? 
I ran Barkley's eyesight is real bad at this point. He doesn't even know where Tony is unless he's bumping bodies. Work with work with and let's remember, he once had a detached retina in his left eye. He's had two detached retina surgeries in the left eye. There's a solid left hook by Tony. Barkley comes back with a left Punch to the body. If more Tony Barkley only... stuff to the body. I'm sorry, George. If Tony would only back away, he can see that this guy can't see him. You know, Larry, you talk about the vision thing, and Barkley went to the wrong corner at the end of round one. They're both trimmed in black and red all the way down. All right. Okay, let's take a look at that clean right hand, and there you saw the mouthpiece flying outside of the ring once more with feeling. Measuring his opponent. Very cool inside, very impressive, Tony. He is fighting up and surpassing the level of his opponent so far. You know, you only got a minute to rest. Why would they stuff his nose with all that stuff? Can he take a second win? Can he rest himself? No, that's not a smart idea. Well, they must be worried about the blood flow. Maybe that nose is broken, George, and that's why it's bleeding so profusely. You work with Q-tips, even the bigger Q-tips, but you don't stick that much stuff up when the guy's supposed to be resting in the corner. Good point. Another right cross after a right uppercut. Tony with target practice now inside against Barkley's head. Look at the fast hands. This is brilliant stuff from James Tony. If Tony would step around to the other side of the ring, he can see the vision problem that Barkley is having and wouldn't let, let him get close because he's got to get close to feel where he is. He's punching by feel now. He just doesn't see what he's doing. Low blow, Tony. Nice well, this has been Iran's method for years. Lean in, shoulder the opponent, get your body on him, and then pound away at close quarters. And he's thrown a lot of punches to Tony's hip. Below the belt in that fashion, he, this is not what Tony needs to be taking at this point. Chopping right hand by Barkley missed. Tony spins away and shows off his hand speed and combinations again. James Tony piling up points early against Iran Barkley. Barkley has been in this amount of trouble before, so you just can't just get overconfident with him. He can still land that telling blow, have you on the floor. Yeah, when he knocked out Tommy Hearns several years back, it was a fight in which he had been thoroughly dominated all along and was bleeding badly. But he can launch one. Now, Tony is starting to land shots to the side now. That's, it's going to help this young fighter as the fight goes on. Taking a page out of Barkley's book. Saying to himself, well, if we're going to stand here shoulder to shoulder, I may as well do the same thing Iran does and whack away at the lip. Barkley's starting to push him into the corners now. No low blow warnings from Richard Steele. Barkley has begun to land several to the hip area of James Tony. That's right. Chopping rights inside by Tony. Three of them landed. And Richard Steele wants Barkley to come to his corner so that his glove can be retaped. This helps Tony because he's taking a well-earned breather here. He no. should be sucking in as much oxygen as he can right now, not just stand there. But this? Tony the has shown so far on, that his claim that he could be more active at 168 than he was at 160 right. is Time. true. Tony's connecting nearly half of his punches in this round, 18 of 43 so far. Barkley didn't get a chance to dab at the blood streaming from his nose while he got that glove rewrapped. Tony with the jab. One, two, three, four, five, seven of them. Barkley jabs back. Tony knocks the mouthpiece out again, this time with a short left hook. Going, going, going. You can, you can, you can frame him 
to join me in the lazy left hand he's got. Harold Letterman, how do you score the bout so far? Jim, four rounds to none, 40 to 36, James Tony. I think he's just winning this fight on clean punching. You know, we score on clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship and defense. James Tony is winning this basically on the clean punching. Pick it up now. Pick it up now. Pick it Any up. arguments, ladies and gentlemen? If he's losing the hand box because he's being hit with the punches below the belt and on the hip, that may have some effect if the fight goes to the 10th and 11th round. Now you're going to see the three right hands that Tony landed toward the end of the round. One, two, three. And Barkley went out of that round laughing. Whew. <laughs> well, that's Iran. He loves to rumble. At the time at which, or at the age, I should say, at which Tony was playing high school football, Iran was in a life and death street gang in the Bronx named the Black Spades. Pull it back. Pull it back. And the thing about being a fighter, you got no gang. You got to do it all by yourself. Tony with another splendid right in there. No Tony is real effective when Barkley throws that hook, he's getting underneath it. Takes a lot of, and it discourages a fighter when you go underneath his left hook. Barkley chases Tony to land one relatively light left hook. And uh, starts punching away to the hip joint again. That can really hurt a young fighter because he'll let you hit him not knowing what you're doing to him. Right, step back, step back. Come on, let's go. Well, elaborate on that, George, because to the average guy, it might not look as though those punches mean anything. Yeah, you go to your corner and you can barely sit down in your on your stool because your hip is sore and you don't know what's going on. Come on, let's work. Because you're not hurt on top, you're work. not suspicious. This is a job for a referee now. Probably too many referees let guys get away with those punches to Richard Steele is looking up high, and he hasn't glanced down yet. He's looking for headbutts. He head said butts. once, keep, keep him up. He's only said it once. Yeah. But he's watching for headbutts, which is another frequent occurrence in Barkley's fights because of his style. He's admonished once to keep him up, but that's not enough. He should pull this guy off and say, we're not going to have it. Double right inside by Tony. Bang, bang. Saw the blood fly from Barkley's head. The thing about Tony, he weighed in at 168, but by dinner time that day, he was back up to 173, you can believe it. You don't want a guy that big leaning on you. Well, I'm sure both of them weighed 168 by the time they came in here tonight. No, no, I mean, uh, yeah, I know you mean Iran. Up, Iran Barkley must have went back up to 173 or 175 because you can't have that big man leaning on you. The same left hook that dropped Tommy Hearns, Barkley is starting to find range for. Your hands are free work. There you go. Now you're telling me, George, that despite the punch-by-punch -punch domination on, we've seen early from James Tony, Barkley is getting enough here and there to maybe set something up for later on. That's right. Those body punches is helping him. He's not skillful. He's not known to win fights on points anyway. So why not just keep hitting on the punch, catch this guy leaning, and grab him? Tony walks away after once again landing a flurry inside. Blood streaming Watch from Barkley's head. nose and Iran, the warrior, continues to chase James to the ropes. It's the old saying, you don't pull a switchblade on an elephant. <laughs> and sometimes both good shots may look like they hurt, but this big guy's not hurt. Well, this is a primitive game and Barkley is a primitive fighter, but the man with the skill is dominating him now. All we got to do is keep doing what we want. Even if you hit him with the, the muscle, yeah. right. that's all. And when he starts rolling like that, turn it, go underneath. Right. You got to bend your legs and go underneath. That's all. I'm looking, man. It's coming. It's coming. He's getting tired, champ. You got to roll and go underneath. That's all you got to do, champ. That's all. Need a drink? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Suck it up, baby. Come on, baby. Suck it up. Show him what you made out of it. Show him what you made out of it, baby. Show him what you made out of it. Seconds out. I got it, baby. Don't worry about it. We got it. Show him. Don't get careless. Show him what you're doing. Now, George Foreman, when we saw Barkley spit blood there, you got the impression that he's probably swallowing a good deal of it Mahoney. during the rounds. How I, much will that bother him? I do believe that this guy's accustomed to being in this kind of trouble. He probably gets it in the gym, so he's not out of, out of tune with it. He doesn't mind right now. Does he notice it? Oh, he doesn't even care. 
His corner told him when Tony rolled to go underneath. He keeps going on top. Tony with magnificent hand speed. You won't often see that kind of flurry at 168 pounds. Although now, of course, Michael Nunn has a 168-pound championship. Come on, let's work. Yes, but, you know, somebody with Barkley's mentality thinks, I've been hit all those punches, now I've got them where I want them. Yep. That's just the way a fighter like Barkley thinks. He freely acknowledged yesterday that he would never expect to win a fight like this on points. He's here to front. try to Keep score a knockout. So losing rounds doesn't much bother Iran Barkley. As far as I'm concerned, this guy, Tony, should sit around and coast for a round now, regroup, suck up his energy, and go for the Come seventh, on, your hands the, are free. go for fine. the eighth, ninth, and tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Well, at what, point, at what point, if you're in Tony's corner, do you tell your man to try to stay away from some of these inside confrontations and get a little bit farther away? I think that Tony is real skillful. He knows the coast. I don't think his corner is even aware that, of the need to coach with such a big guy let's like work, this. The corner has never had him in with a guy this big in a fight, this stature. But you gotta coast at some time. You're not gonna Watch get a knockout head. like that. Win the fight. Barkley sticking to his game plan with dogged determination. Keeps his head on Tony's shoulder, leans his body in on him. Watch his shoulder. And George, you've referred several times as Tony lands two more uppercuts in there and stuns Iran Barkley. Stuns Barkley with a minute to go in round six. But this is not the kind of fight he wanted the sixth round. This is the round he should have been coasting. Not to his advantage to mix it up with him now. And Barkley coming back, and I was about to say, you've referred several times to Iran leaning on James. It's going to help to tire Tony out, right? That's right. Barkley has got to be winning somewhere near 175 pounds. On, that big head work. on your chest like that, don't push him. It's going to wear you out. And George. as he leans on James, he's pushing his legs down on the canvas all the time. So he's, doing, he's following somebody's plan. There's a left hook that landed for Barkley. Larry? Well, I think punches where you're out also, George. And most of the good ones are being landed by Tony. They just don't wear the, the big guys out like they do the smaller guys. Because no sometimes homie. you're hitting them good, and they just accustomed to being hit harder. Tony finished the round with a left to the neck and two solid rights to Barkley's chin. And Iran Barkley looks a little weary midway through this terrible. world championship bout. You don't like that. You got to keep doubling the hook out, man. Okay. You got to keep doubling the hook. Make them fight, baby. Hands up and make them fight. All right, baby, that's all you got to do. Keep them hands up and it's going right to him, Tap. Make him fight. Double that left hook up. Just double up. He's turning that way. You got to double it up. Let him reach out. Let him. Let's go. Here we go, baby. Open up. Watch Tony in close. Take your time. He's been very, Take very time. clever. He's just 24 years old. Didn't start really boxing until he was out of high school. And he has a really good athlete's feel. Feel. Look him. So what's going on in the ring? There's some kind of s sensitivity to the movements of his opponent and what he can do that is the mark of what I would call a natural athlete. Good point, Larry. Almost magical the way he can bob under Barkley's head, slide to the side, and then come up with the uppercut at just the right moment. Well, in all of these punch stat numbers that you're going to see in the closing rounds, you are looking at a statistical mismatch. Don't hold it. We're looking at a mismatch in the fight right now. Although it could turn around, what we know what's ha of what has happened, it is a mismatch. It's been all James Tony. But punch Barkley is hoping that in Step the back. war Roll. of attrition, things will begin to go his way later on. Starting to agree with, with Larry now. Punches take things out of you too. Remember, I said at the start of the fight that that the second half of the fight could be Barkley's unless Tony did some serious damage, and and Barkley does look like he's slowing up a little bit here. Tony, for the first time, jab to the body. And that's well, that's hard out. to see Work a young great. fella do when the fight gets in beyond six rounds. You can see that Barkley's left eye is badly swollen. His vision probably compromised, but some would say, well, that vision was already badly compromised. That Barkley's got one big left arm. That thing turns into a hook and gets you sleeping. You're going to wake up. 
in your dressing room. Punch and get out, punch and get out. Punch and get out, says Steele. He still hasn't worn Barkley for the low blows, and they are still coming with some frequency. Barkley's from that school. It's not how you play the game, it's winning it counts. Work inside and get out. Put your arms back. Sonny Liston said that. That would be the old school, right? <laughs> keep him up, keep him up. Sonny, of course, was in some of the most distinguished schools of hard knocks, George. <laughs> Back before he was your idol. Walks away and turns his head like nothing has happened. And then rains that right hand over the top. Over and under. Brilliant display of technique by James Tony. Barkley's left eye is completely starting to shut up now. He's better go on out there and look for a knockout because of that jab can really just shut him down. Well, for seven rounds, oh, it has it unquestionably been James Tony's most impressive performance. And all the talk about how different he'd be at 168 pounds seems to be fulfilled with his performance here tonight. Punching it out, punching it out. No now for the no first time, Barkley is hanging on and holding. He's not throwing shots. Oh, well, Iran Barkley has slowed down. But he's still taking those uppercuts inside. You know that if you beat even on a rock often enough, the rock is going to start to chip and break. I've heard that said. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through the seventh round? Larry, 69, 64, six rounds to one favorite James Tony. I think James Tony's mugging him. I mean, he's beating him up. The only round I gave to Iran Barkley was round six, when I thought James Tony uh, sort of dogged it for two and a half minutes, and Iran sort of took over, uh, you know, most of the round. But that's it. It's all Tony. I've, I've got a shutout for Tony so far. All right. All right. Wake up now. Wake up in there. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's turning out that for Tony, Barkley is the ideal bull. That he can exhibit his skills and his poise, Bell all of his Bellador. abilities. <laughs> well, Logic told you that a skilled counterpuncher like Tony might well feast on somebody who would come to him. And Barkley, Barkley is by no means out of this picture yet. Okay, we'll watch that, George. Seven rounds down, five rounds to go. Tony landed 72% of his punches well, holy... in round number seven. Punch get out of here. Barkley so is starting now when he goes forward to hold a little bit because those oh, uppercuts are starting work. to hurt. He should have been doing that earlier. Keep when you up, bump, hold, make sure the guy doesn't hit you. It's getting harder and harder to figure, George, what Barkley would do to turn it around. It on, He's not even out. throwing the left hook with that much frequency now. Time to go to corner. Come on. Come on, you guys. Come on. Steele trying to hurry things up tape. as he brings Barkley to the corner. And once again, Iran must have his glove tape. All the way around. Yesterday, we all saw the way up and down, up James and down. Tony in his room playing a computer boxing game with a friend. He was losing that game. And that's the only thing he's Let's lost in boxing Wait, this Let's weekend go. so far. Do we begin to sneak a peek ahead to what it would be like to have Come James Tony in the work. ring with Roy Jones at 168 pounds? Not yet. We've got a few more rounds to go. George, right. hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> if only we could tell Barkley to just hang in there. Barkley's starting to jab. Now, this should have been a weapon for him early on. Oh, what a brilliant display of accurate power punching by James Tony. Holy, what Tony is doing, you seldom see from a young fighter. This is something you see good veterans like a late Muhammad Ali who just jab right hand. And he's an awfully experienced young fighter, George. Eight championship fights in the last 21 months. And he is showing all the benefits of the lessons he's learned against tough opponents. He's got it up. An opponent just fits him right down to the tee. Keep him up, keep him up. Don't hold him. Barkley goes back to whacking away at the liver while clinching James Tony. Tony takes one of his periodic rests. Don't hold him. The thing Barkley didn't look at with Tony that he did maybe with Tony Hearns. Tony's got big legs. He doesn't have real skinny legs. So these guys, you just can't hit them with one shot and drop them like you would a Tony Hearns. And when he fought Tommy Hearns, 
Hearns wasn't 24 years old as James Tony is. Sometimes the 24 years old can work a lot against you too. Not tonight. Not tonight? <laughs> no, not tonight, George. Tonight it looks real good on James Tony. And the 32 don't look as good on Barkley. Left hooks from Tony. Barkley is stunned again. And Iran just can't defend himself against that crisp hand speed and punching inside. The referee has been real generous not to give him a standing eight count, but there is no standing eight count tonight. Plus the generosity. <laughs> Another great round for Tony. Another session of target practice with spectacular punch stat statistics, no doubt, yet in the Super Metalweight ch Championship. It is now his to lose and Barkley's to win back. Not only that, the doctors are really taking notice to that left eye. They don't like what they see, the ringside doctors. And he's, he's giving the, the referee some instructions not hand. to let him take too much abuse on that left eye. Don't let the graphic fool you. This is the ninth round, not the eighth. And you heard Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, Barkley's trainer, asking for what would amount to one last stand. Come on, don't hold him. Punch it, get out of there. Great, step back, step back. Barkley's got a lot of heart. A little more heart than anything else at this point. Maybe punch more heart out. than was good for him at the beginning of the evening. There's that same left hook that dropped Tommy Hearns.